Welcome back to New Rockstars. I'm Tommy Bechtold and the 1978 Star Wars Holiday Special is so bizarre it haunts our Yuletide sugar plum visions. It's even inspired a new Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special debuting. This thing is so weird we had to give it a bootleg breakdown. What the f*** is a bootleg breakdown you ask? Well why didn't you pay attention last time? Bootleg breakdowns are where I dive into the scummy ponds of the cheesiest, crummiest, campiest specials and movies that are just so bad they make Eric Voss go, Tommy, please stop calling me this late. Just go do it yourself. Well, thanks, Eric. Now that Uncle Tommy has the wheel, I'm going to guide you through the unintentionally hilarious moments that happen throughout this Star Wars story. In this case, WTF stands for What the Force. These aren't criticisms. These are celebrations of the reasons we should all know and love this story, no matter how ridiculous it is. So don't have a bad feeling about this. The Star Wars Holiday Special debuted in 1978, just one year after the first Star Wars movie, A New Hope. Fans looking for an extension of the lore and story of the first Star Wars film were instead treated to a 90 minute fever dream that seems less about Star Wars and more about Star Wars with the dollar signs instead of asses, get it? That sweet, sweet cash, baby. Moolah. Credits. Bucks. In this breakdown, I'm gonna explain how this special served as a baby step in Star Wars' journey from film and saga into brand and franchise. Merchandise. Talking about you, people who bought the Jar Jar Binks watches. I'm one of those people. The first WTF moment is literally the first moment of the whole special. From the cold open with Han and Chewie that establishes, <gasps> Chewbacca has a family? To the opening credits that just feel so not Star Wars-y. Musical guest, Max Rebo. We even get teased a Robert Smigel-esque cartoon. Why isn't there just a crawl? Isn't that what Star Wars is about? Also, it kind of spoils the special guests that you have coming up later in the episode when you announce them in the opening credits. However, the most unforgivable element of this is that they dogged my boy Kenny Baker. R2-D2 as R2-D2. R2-D2 as himself? There's a person in there. The kids need to know that. There's a person in here too. Chewie is heading home to Kashyyyk to celebrate Life Day with his family, setting up a location that will become canon in later Star Wars films. Revenge of the Sith depicted the Battle of Kashyyyk, forcing us to spell it with three Y's, as in, whoa, 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 why are we spelling it this way? Oh, right, the writers of the Star Wars Holiday Special were paid by the letter. Life Day also came back in the pilot episode of The Mandalorian. That is why this is required viewing. I was hoping to be free for uh, Life Day. Dave Filoni needs us all to have the same insane fandom that he has. Get on the bus, drink the Kool-Aid. Oh yeah. Spelled with three Y's. We get our next WTF moment when we meet the Chewbacca family. <laughs> Why do they all sound the same? The important thing is they're playing with toys. Both Itchy and Lumpy are playing with X-Wing toys and they seem to be having a great time. I want to play with an X-Wing toy. Consume. Can we talk about how their names are Itchy and Lumpy? Now, I understand that Chewy is an abbreviation of Chewbacca, but that would mean that their names are like Lumpaka and Itchbaka? I want to guess their nicknames because otherwise Star Wars WTF, and this time I mean what the f***. We're not going to sugarcoat it for you kids, even though this is a holiday special. We're going to get raw. You rock stars after dark. NR stands for not rated in this episode. It's rated and we will be flagged. We stay with Chewbacca's son Lumpy for WTF moment number three, which is a batshit Cirque du Soleil fever dream. Evidently, Lumpy can summon a janky tumbling troop from what I can only assume is their permanent prison in hell simply by pushing a button on a prop that is clearly a tape recorder. Who out there was watching this saying, I hope they don't do cool Star Wars shit. Instead, I hope they focus on a poorly choreographed holographic tumbling routine. Really, this whole segment seems to answer the question, how much cocaine is too much cocaine? We finally get some Luke Skywalker action with WTF moment number four. Now remember, Eric Voss gives you Easter eggs, I give you cow patties. <laughs> moments that make you go, God, I wish I had never seen this. Luke is here to save the day by problematically telling Chewbacca's wife, Mala, that she needs to smile. Come on, Mala, let's see a little smile. Wow, a curveball from the Chosen. Luke basically suggests that Chewbacca isn't going to want to come home and spend life day with his shrewish, standoffish wife. I think that's the conflict in the Star Wars Holiday Special. Han and Chewie are late for a family party, I guess. It's really hard to be sure, though, because we are forced to watch four minutes of amateur tumbling in between scenes. 
WTF moment has got to be Art Carney. Art Carney is a comedy legend, and this scene actually feels kind of Star Wars-y because it features a good guy tricking a bad guy. Ultimately, though, it's just a transaction scene designed to introduce new products that they could sell to consumers. Speaking of which... Hand sanitizer is still a super important and in-demand product. We're lucky to have some friends who run a small business that makes hand sanitizer, among other things, and they've been keeping us in stock. We struck a deal with them to distribute their hand sanitizer, which is a great way to get a product so many people want and need right now while also supporting small businesses, including ours. Sanitize and Chill combines hospital-grade ethanol-based hand sanitizer with CBD. We've been heavily involved in creating the formulation because we didn't want to get behind any product that wasn't going to be effective at killing viruses. We've actually had other medical professionals weigh in and we were able to meet the highest levels of guidelines. There's no THC in this stuff, so you're not going to get high, but your hands will get clean. Every bottle has 100 milligrams of CBD and the alcohol content of the sanitizer is above the 60% the CDC recommends for inactivating viruses similar to COVID-19. This stuff has 70% ethanol, so it is stronger than Purell. Sanitize and chill. So if you're looking for hand sanitizer and you want to help new rock stars, act now and grab yourself a bottle or a five or a 10 pack. Use the link in the video's description and use the discount code NR10 for 10% off your order at sanitizeandchill.com. Click the link in the description to find out more. Art Carney isn't the only TV legend to show up in the Star Wars Holiday Special. Harvey Corman comes in and delivers three characters that are just bonkers crazy. I can only imagine that the writers conceived of a spin-off Star Wars variety show set in the universe, starring people like Carney, Corman, and a guest star we're gonna get to later. I don't know. So the writing staff of this special is actually made up of late night TV writers and writers who write for award shows like Bruce Valanche. And it makes sense because the story is basically told in vignettes, some funnier than others, to be honest. The problem is none of it really makes sense and none of it feels really authentic to Star Wars. Harvey Corman, for his part, is actually pretty hilarious, but why am I watching him as an alien named Gormanda instead of Luke, Leia, Han? I told you Art Carney was coming back and I am so sorry to share this scene with you. I don't know why he thinks that in the midst of an imperial search of Chewbacca's home, itchy Chewbacca's father needs to watch VR porn, but he does. And I don't think I'm reading into this too much. This is definitely supposed to be sexual. Why is this happening? When I watched this special to do the breakdown, I turned this down so that my mom couldn't hear me watching it. I'm a man in my 30s. I've kissed a girl before. With a lie detector test determined, that was a lie. I get it, Diane Carroll is beautiful, but isn't there a more nuanced way to keep horny adult attention on this special without a five minute cyber sex video? Of all of the celebrity vignettes, the one that makes the most sense is Jefferson Starship showing up in another virtual reality segment. In real life, they were a pretty trippy, spaced out band that definitely seems like they would be at home sharing a double bill with the Cantina band. Plus, you know they were gonna go and try and make a record soundtrack of this special and sell a million copies. Even though this flopped, it did pave the way for the Star Wars holiday album Christmas in the Stars, with which, I kid you not, featured a duet between R2-D2 and Bon Jovi. As we take the All right, let's talk about the cartoon. This is the first segment where WTF actually stands for, wow, this is fun. This cartoon has lots of great stuff. Boba Fett is introduced into the Star Wars universe and he's already being a bastard. We get snarky droids and Harrison Ford just basically refusing to participate. What happened? My guess is they brought in an impersonator, probably Mark Hamill. This was the most fun part of the special for me as a first time viewer, to be honest. Again, even this cartoon felt like it was obviously a potential spinoff for future animated projects, but I just don't see animation being a huge part of Star Wars moving forward. Just kidding. At least this was fun Star Wars content, not just cringy merchandising opportunities. So thumbs up for the cartoon. Okay, saving the best WTF for last in this truly way too long segment starring B. Arthur, Harvey Corman, and every possible alien costume they had in the warehouse. I mean, we got everybody, including I think a werewolf. It starts as a comedy sketch that isn't really that funny at all, aside from Harvey Corman drinking through the top of his head. And it ends with B. Arthur appeasing this wretched hive with a free round of drinks after they threaten to kill her. Ooh, and a song called Good Night, But Not Goodbye. Good night, but not goodbye. Which at this point in the special, it probably should have been. 
Again, this song is sung as a reward for all of the bad aliens not murdering her. There is definitely something funny about her being charmed by the clientele doing the bare minimum. And just like that, one brisk hour and 37 minutes later, the Star Wars Holiday Special comes to an end. Thank you. The Maker. Chewbacca was reunited with his family, which I guess was the point. Look, I love Star Wars. Harrison Ford is my favorite actor of all time. But I can't imagine if I was a kid in 1978 after watching this. It really seems like they hired a bunch of writers who had never seen or heard of Star Wars and tasked them with selling a bunch of toys and records. I guess little kids might like Itchy and Lumpy the same way that little kids like Jar Jar. So what is the legacy of this special? I mean, much like the Fantastic Four video we discussed last time, this is really meant to be forgotten. It's a weird misstep in the galaxy far, far away. I will say it's essential viewing for any Star Wars fan because if you don't love Star Wars at its holiday special, you don't deserve Star Wars at its Empire Strikes Back. So give it a watch and let me know what you think. Also, as always, hit me with suggestions for other long forgotten terrible properties that you'd like to see me cover for future bootleg breakdown. Shoot me a comment on the Discord by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash newrockstars. Comment down below, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Tommy Bechtold, follow newrockstars, and subscribe for more bootleg breakdowns. May the force be with you. <laughs>